Ladies and gentlemen, this is a special live unboxing. Well, it's like an anti-unboxing, really, if you think about it, because I'm at a trade show. I don't get any packages here, but I do buy at the trade shows. It's been about a day, and I did buy some shit, as I like to say. I'm just gonna go around the cases, because I put them in randomly. This showcase, you guys remember I showed you the Platinum Limited Edition made for the Japanese boutique. They made 20 of these. They made 100 in the white gold version, which I think is a looker. I think it's better looking. If you zoom in on a dial, you know, the, the colorway, as Davis would say, a true sneakerhead, is absolutely insane on a white gold. And it's a bit lighter, still a heavy watch. The Platinum is really heavy. So that was one of the pickups that I picked up at the show. Again, uh, I have, this is the first time actually physically seeing this watch in person. I've seen it only on pictures and I saw it on a friend's showcase and it had to be mine. Let's go, oh. Here's something extremely special. This is a very limited production Autumn RPG, a Royal Oak Turbion in Platinum. This is only the second time I actually physically have this watch. And when I saw this again, sort of that Vignet fade in, fade out dial theme really works the same as it does on that watch. But uh, again, something super rare. This is probably the most expensive pickup from the show. All right, listen, nothing, nothing crazy. Picked up a little Calatrava with a hobnail bezel. This is a 5197 or 51 something seven, irrelevant. But again, a classic paddock. And what's cool about this is somebody serviced this watch and they wanted a new paddock strap and they put it on the strap that's probably about 20 years older than the watch itself. This is like a very old school paddock strap. I know it kind of seems fake, but literally it's PP Lizard, that's all it says. I don't know. It's older than you need it for sure. But somebody had like an NOS strap, which is really cool. The strap itself is collectible. No, I'm just kidding. This is probably the coolest pickup of the show. It's a Cartier Mystery Turbion. So if you zoom in early, it seems like the hands are floating. The way this works is there's actually two glass discs to which the hands are attached. So as the discs move, so do the hands, giving it the illusion that it floats in the air. Finishing on the movement, Marco, shout out to Marco. Uh, but just a really, really beautiful watch. Here, this is a really cool pickup. So the Jaeger Polaris, uh, they made a new version on a bracelet. Again, note the theme, like a lot of these companies are doing this old school Vignet dials. If you go back to older day dates, they used to have those day dates and they just with the Vignet dials. And Vignet is simply, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, Vignet is simply when a color fades, right? So it goes from dark to light. And this is an alarm watch, it's a Polaris. We had one of these on a strap before. I really, really like this model. And honestly, I think the dial just does it for me on this one. I bought this Panerai Regatta. Uh, so, so again, limited edition of, I can't tell because I can't see. Uh, so again, this is a uh, Pam, was it five, uh, 526, right? Big watch, I talked about like certain watches out there like the RM28 and stuff where a guy with a small wrist can still, you know, get away with it. Well, when Panerai does these big watches, with this rip style strap, when you even when you put it on a small wrist, it still works. Well, seemingly. Most will probably say this is too big for me, but haters gonna hate, I don't know. Talk about the watch on my wrist. If you guys remember back in the day when I was, uh, when AP became my favorite brand, one of the things I used to always buy and push was the limited edition offshores. This was in the era of when you couldn't give away a Royal Oak and offshores were the thing to be. So no, this isn't aftermarket. This isn't original AP and what this is, is a Marcus edition, and that's what makes it that much more special. With uh, my son, whose name is Marcus, who's supposed to be here today, by the way. What I love about this watch, I don't remember how many they made. Let's see, a uh, hundred of these they made in steel PVD, and they also made this in a rose gold version where the insert, the tachymeter scale, was in red, actually, black dial, red insert. But, I mean, everything about this watch, first of all, screams Miami. It comes on a white strap, to obviously to match the pushers, uh, but this is what does it for me. The fact that it says my son's name in the back and I didn't make that. I know he's gonna show up and say, Dad, you should probably keep this one for the family. <laughs> and I'm probably gonna say yes and then my wife will kill me. So that's definitely another special pickup. There was some other stuff back here. Brigade. Again, you know, I'm a big fan of Brigade. Now, never mind the strap on this because somebody sweated all over it. So that's gonna have to get replaced. But uh, Brigade Equation of Time. We have a white gold version of that already, but this is the yellow gold version. Again, a lot of value for your dollar. I mean, you have to you have to appreciate Brigade for what it does in terms of movement decoration, and you have to appreciate the kind of value you get with something like this, considering this is a perpetual calendar equation of time. Quick reminder, for those that don't remember what an equation of time is, it shows you the difference between mean time and solar time. And it's a hell of a complication 
It's a hell of a useless application, but it's a hell of an application to try to, complication to try to implement in a mechanical watch that's also an automatic. I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that would be it. I am, however, I am, however, working on a couple of other things. In the interim, if you guys want to show the live, just a quick run through some of the watches that we actually have here, you're welcome to do so. YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next unboxing. This was not an unboxing. This was like an anti-unboxing. <laughs> I feel like I should have taken a lid and just like, you know, open stuff or like had one box and just kept opening and closing it. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Thank you live. Thank you, YouTube. See you next time.